I'm with the order. I'm inspecting the clock tower. That's where they hung the dummy. You didn't happen to see if they left anything else behind, did you? Thankfully, nothing dangerous was uncovered. In any case, this clock is fine. Job done. But there's a problem? There is. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the clocks in town are all set to this one. Well, if I want to go the extra mile, I really should check the other ones, too. Make sure they're all ticking right. Problem is, I have to stay right here and keep an eye on this one. If only there were someone else to check the others. But there isn't. And so you're stuck. Why are you so worried about the clocks, anyway? What's the big deal? It's hard to explain. I have this irrational fear that keeps creeping into my head. That should the clocks ever stop, then that'll cause everything else to, too. Time, the world, everyone, finished. I have to know that all the clocks are ticking. I hate to ask, but could you check them for me? It would certainly help put my mind at ease. Sure. How many are there in this city? If you can spare a minute to examine the other clocks, I would be grateful. The clocks are all ticking happily away. I hope you can relax now. Thank you. If I had failed to inspect the clocks and they had stopped, I don't know what I would have done. I would have felt responsible for the world coming to an end. I wouldn't have been able to keep living, not with that kind of guilt on my shoulders. I'm glad I could put your mind at ease, but remember, the end is still coming, you know. A lot sooner than you think. <sighs> That's encouraging. What can I say? It's inevitable. Yes, I do know that. But that's the reason why I care for the clock so much. I don't want to wait for the Savior to come and do all the work. Why is that? You don't trust her? No, it's not that. When the world ends, I want to be absolutely sure. I want to be 100% certain that I finished the task that I was meant to do. No regrets, is that it? No feeling you left your job unfinished? Yes. That's exactly right. No regrets. Even if the Savior doesn't show up to save the whole of mankind, I can face the end with pride. Huh. Maybe not everyone needs to be saved by God. Maybe completing your duty is the way. The way to salvation.
You look like you're enjoying yourself. Good book? It's my journal. I've written in it for years. I read through it every day. It reminds me of the past. I'm retired, so I have plenty of time on my hands. Those are all yours? Every single one? I've been writing for 500 years now. That adds up, you know. Ah, <laughs> uh, the memories. I've experienced so much in those years. I've really led a great life. Nowadays, I find joy in reading about the past and enjoying freshly baked delicious muffins. That's all a simple man like me really needs. The simple pleasures in life for a simple man. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, speaking of freshly baked muffins. Fresh out of the oven, just the way you like them. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, young man. You say that to me every day. Change it up a little, will you? <laughs> oh, I'll think of something different for you tomorrow. Hmm. Let me see here. There you go. Thanks. See ya. Marlin bakes the most mouth-watering muffins. They're exquisite. He even delivers them to me here personally every day. That's nice. You two seem like your old friends. Well, I'd like to think we're more than that. Talking to him always cheers me up. I've never had a family of my own. To me, that friendly boy who brings me muffins every day is like the son I never had. Great memories, great food, and great friends. What more do you need? Looks like you're all set. Indeed I am. I know we don't have much longer in this world, but even if everything ends tomorrow, I'll have no regrets. Well, except for one little thing. It's about these journals. Well, I'm afraid I lost the first one some time ago. It chronicles the first 50 years of my life. 50 years. You want it back, of course. Yes, I do. I don't suppose I could ask. Well, do you think you could look around for it? Sure, why not? I'll take a look. How will I know it's yours? My name is written on the cover. I don't think you should have any problems recognizing it. Oh, and I'd like to ask you not to read it if you find it. Not to say my life has been all that exciting. <laughs> of course. Hmm. It'll be tricky to find, though. Is there anything else that might help? Do you remember where or when you lost it? Well... Hmm. It's a bit of a long shot, but... I may have donated it with some of my old books by mistake a long time ago. If memory serves, they went to a woman named Mitka. She runs a secondhand shop, or used to. <sighs> I'm afraid I don't know where she is now, or what she's doing. Half a century of my life was in that journal. I've searched high and low. Where could it be? Oh, Celeste! I'm looking for a woman who used to own a bookstore in these parts. She also goes by the name Mitka. Well, my name is Mitka, and I ran a bookshop once back in the day, but that was over 200 years ago. Are you certain I'm the one you're looking for? I'm not, but maybe you can help me. Listen, I know it's been a while, but I was wondering if you remember a man named Renolf. Ah, yes. I remember him. Gosh, that was a long time ago. Who are you, anyway? What do you want with him? He's the one who found me, really. He asked me to track down an old journal of his for him. He did? Huh. That's a strange request. And what is he up to these days? Eating muffins and reading his books. That's about it, really. Oh. So, why are you helping him, if you don't mind my asking? It's what I do, that's all. Oh. Are you one of those people who does charity work? <sighs> Call it what you will. So, can you help me out? All I can tell you is that I've never handled his journal, but I do know a thing or two about his past. But none of that is for me to divulge. If you want the truth, you need to find out for yourself. I plan to. I just don't know where to start. Head to the part of the city they call the Warren. Once there, seek out the man with no name. <laughs> right. Hope there's only one of them, or that's gonna be rather difficult. Oh, not to worry. 
You'll find him. But I urge you to be very, very careful. What you're doing is admirable, but it might not be what he really needs. Venture into the Warren and seek out the man with no name. He may know the whereabouts of Renolf's journal, if you're lucky. What? Care to tell me your name? You only need a name if you want to talk to people. If you don't, then what good is it? That's why I don't need one. Nor do I ever want one again. <laughs> You're definitely the one I'm looking for. The man without a name. That's you. It's true, I've been nameless for many years. But am I the one you seek? Who knows? Who knows anything for certain in this dying world? I guess we can skip the introductions then. I've got a question for you. The reason I wanted to talk to you is because I'm looking for a journal. It belonged to Renolf. Uh, Renolf's journal? Why? What do you want with a thing like that? Nothing. It's not for me. He asked me to find it for him. I'm just doing him a favor. <sighs> I thought this day would come. After two centuries, I'd hoped he'd given up. But when has a man like me ever gotten his way in this miserable world? <laughs> so much water under the bridge. What did you say? You say Renolf asked you to do this for him. Is that true? That's right. He did. Then go to Yusnan. A woman named Durin has what you're looking for. When you see her, hand her this letter. Tell her that Redick sent you. Redick? So that's your name. It was... centuries ago. Anyway, you tell Orin who sent you, and she'll help you out. Orin liked to watch the trains go by. She would sit and watch for hours. You'll probably find her near the Overlook in Yusnan, where you can see the tracks. Head to Yusnan. A woman named Orin has what you're looking for. Renolf's journal. Who are you? You must be Orin. Here, I have a letter for you from Redick. Redick? <laughs> well, that's a name from the past. Wait, I thought he was dead. Hmm. Let me see that thing. Well, that's his handwriting, all right. I'd recognize it anywhere. Here, I've kept the journal with me, just as I promised him. I don't mean to pry, but how do you two know each other? We used to date. Not one of my finer moments, that's for sure. Hindsight, you know. But that was lifetimes ago. He made me keep this while we were still together. Why would he give it to you instead of keeping it? Have you read it? <laughs> the thought never even crossed my mind. And I knew anything that bastard Reddick was involved with couldn't be good. Please, take it. I'm sick of carrying it everywhere. I'm just happy to wash my hands of the whole thing. It's your problem now. All right, I get it. Thanks. Light! You found his journal. I can't believe it. I know, right? Weird, huh? What I don't understand is why there are so many people involved. First Reddick had it. Then he gave it to his friend Orin. For safekeeping. I wonder if it holds some sort of big secret. If secret's so dangerous, just having the journal in his possession could put him at risk. What do you think? I think... I think I should read the journal before I give it back. It would be the fastest way to find out what's going on. But do you really think you should? I mean, it is private after all. But does it really matter at this point? I mean... We're already neck deep in his affairs. It's all for his benefit anyway, right? Okay, it's up to you. But remember, what's been read can't be unread. If you want to do this, you're on your own. <laughs>